Welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 198. Do things that others won't do or others can't do, and you will always have plenty to do. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Have you turned your key and heard that dreaded tick, 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 tick because of a dead battery? No worries. I've got the NOCO Genius Boost Jump Starter. This compact tool fits in your glove box and features rechargeable lithium battery technology that will start a dead battery in your car, boat, truck, or RV. It packs a whopping 12-volt, 400-amp starting power and can start up to 20 dead batteries on a single charge. Plus, it has built-in spark-proof technology with reverse polarity protection to safely jumpstart your vehicle. The compact, ergonomically designed clamps are solid copper for maximum conductivity, and there's a built-in ultra-bright dual LED flashlight with seven modes, including an SOS emergency strobe. It's easily rechargeable with a USB outlet, and you can charge your smartphone or tablet while you're on the road. Works on any 12-volt lead-acid battery. The Genius Boost from NOCO is the ultimate emergency tool that's safe and easy to use. Quality design, state-of-the-art technology from NOCO, your battery care source since 1914. Get yours at GeniusChargers.com. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. Today, I am so excited to introduce a very special guest, Steve Mole. Steve, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I am. I'm buckled up here in Oakland, California, and we're ready for just about anything. So uh, we'll we'll take the journey with you. Cool. Well, I really appreciate you being here with me today on Cars Yeah. Steve Mole of Mole Culch Builders in Oakland, California, comes from a long line of skilled metal workers, going all the way back to his grandfather, William, who emigrated here to the United States from France. Steve's shop carries on a tradition carried forward by his father, George, and today, Steve and his wife and sons design, engineer, fabricate, and assemble custom Coatscraft vehicles for the most discerning automotive enthusiast. His skilled team of artisans create and build distinct and spirited high-performance motor cars that are recognized around the world as works of art. Steve, I told the listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a moment and share some more about your history, your business, your interests, and, of course, your passion for automobiles? Well, I, I think my story is, is pretty typical. I'm, I was born in 1946. I grew up the 1950s, 60 lifestyle, much like you saw in American Graffiti, mm-hmm. in Oakland, California. And Oakland has been a hotbed for hot rodding and the, the, well, the, the famous Oakland Roadster Show and and we had indoor midget racing here in uh, Oakland, uh, boat racing here in Lake Merritt, and custom cars. So I grew up in our shop here with my father and grandfather and learned, learned how to weld, but I saw a lot of activity here that really got me wound up. Before I ever made it to high school, I, I was becoming a car nut. And I, and I think a lot of people my age were in the same thing, you know, we that was a good form of entertainment, customizing your cars. And, oh, yeah. Um, but I had the likes of Tommy the Greek, who was a famous auto striper, was part of our uh, shop life here and family life. And, and my father built the cowlings for race boats. The famous California Kitty would build the cowlings race after race. And uh, uh, they were displayed in the Oakland Roadshow shows, the very first ones in 1949. Oh, my I gosh. Remember those activities and so I um, through all this I developed a love of metalwork and uh, it's carried over it was carried down from my grandfather who was a, a great metalsmith but his original trade he was a wheelwright he made wooden wheels for horse-drawn carriages in France wow and uh, when we got when he got to this country he switched to automobiles and uh, we've been messing with automobiles ever since um, we're in a building that my grandfather and father built in 1946 when I was born. We're still here, and uh, we we like this building because it has skylights. It's kind of an old world atmosphere, and, uh, and people comment all the time on how neat the building is and how neat the environment is here. So um, 
that's our story, uh, wrapped up in this stuff as much as you can be. And uh, I think, unfortunately, I've dragging my kids into it, too. <laughs> well, the legacy and heritage is so wonderful to be able to carry that through these generations. It's just magnificent. And then to be in the environment that your grandfather and father built, I mean, I, I can't imagine how special all this is. So absolutely spectacular. As we continue on your journey, I always like to start by asking my guests for a success quote. And this is something that's been instrumental in your life of forming your success and your passion for cars. It's a great way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars, yeah? So, Steve, take the wheel. Okay, I I don't know that it's a quote. I don't have anything that um, Hemingway wrote or anything that's inspired me or anything like that. <laughs> but somewhere along the line, I think it was my father or my uncle uh, or a large family that spent a lot of time together, but it impressed on me and said that do things that others won't do or others can't do, and you will always have plenty to do. Mm. And uh, I think that's what we, that's been sort of my core. Um, and as a result of that, we're, we seem to have created a, a unique niche in what we do. So we have combined European coach building uh, and hot rod specials. And there was a period of time when cars had turned to, in my working experience, when things were being made of fiberglass, it was drag racing. There really wasn't a call for coach building and aluminum bodied cars. And mm -hmm. That started to change when the Ferrari thing started to to, to blossom and, and people wanted their Ferraris and they started to realize that these were quite collectible and desirable uh, pieces of art. And we were ready because we had been making hood panels and gas tanks and battery boxes and seats and things for hot rods. Mm -hmm. So we were well adapted to create these bodies and repair for the most part. So it slowly opened many doors. We received commissions from out of town. We received commissions from out of state and out of the country. And those led to, you know, media things such as your show here and magazines. And anyway, it opened up a lot of doors. So uh, Wonderful. Perfect timing and skill sets and all that. And I love the quote and the concept of do things others can't or won't do. And those customers will beat a path to your door uh, because you're there and you're doing it so well. You talked about growing up in this automotive family, but is there a story that instigated your passion for automobiles, that pivotal moment in your life when you knew you were a car guy and you were going to carry on this legacy that your family started so long ago? I'm 69 years old, and I grew up in the period of time when the coolest guys seemed to get the, the best-looking chicks. You know? <laughs> and, I've uh, heard you know, that before. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and and I'm sure that uh, that created some desire to want to have a cool car. And in Oakland, California, those cool cars might be a, a, a lowered 50 Ford with a Karsten top. Hall was the top guy here in town, and, and you had a Hall top and, uh, you know, a chopped windshield, dual exhaust. And, and those guys always seemed to have a good-looking babe sitting right next to them. <laughs> and, uh, boy, if that didn't get you riled up, I don't know what to do, especially if you're riding a skateboard. In my case, I riding a <laughs> yeah, skateboard. Yeah, I, I rode a lot of skateboards. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you see a guy go by, and you can barely see out the windshield, and there's a good-looking babe in there. You said, boy, I better i got to have one of those, and, and how do we do that? How do we do it? So I'm not so sure that I was unique in that period of time. Um, there was a lot of things those days that, uh, that kids today, we just didn't have the things. We didn't have cell phones, obviously, and all this other distractions. So, mm -hmm. you know, picking up a babe in a cool car is, is something uh, <laughs> that was important. So, And I was able to hang around my dad's shop where they worked on custom cars and and uh, they had an, a muffler shop here and they built you know split manifolds on Chevy 6s and Tommy the Greek was striping cars and there was always race boats here and uh, I think that set the foundation and I didn't even think of it it wasn't by design and I'm reflecting back I think that's started to create a style and a set of standards that have become our style and our set of standards unbeknown mm. to us. It was just, you know, California hot rodding, and uh, I guess I was so wrapped up in it, and um, I mean, I couldn't wait to get out of high school so I could start working on cars. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. 
Steve, I know having your own business is a huge challenge. It's, it's filled with rewards as well. But let's take a look at some of the roads you've driven down and crawl under the hood here. And I'm going to ask you to share a huge challenge or even a great failure that you've faced in your career or your life. But the most important part of this question has to do with how you overcame it and what you learned from that. Well, I think the the biggest thing we face every day is is our ability to complete jobs with the same ambition that we started and and um, the finish seems to slow down in the beginning boy <laughs> you just go like crazy and no problem get started on the job sure. and as a, as the finishing starts to slow you have to overcome that and um, uh, it, it, because if a project doesn't get done completed with a lot of enthusiasm it is of no value it is no value to the world to your client or anything else so mm-hmm. we try to create or complete these jobs with that same enthusiasm that we started with. And um, along the way, things can happen that can derail you, and you have to overcome. I'll never forget we were building a um, car, and we it had a Ferrari Marinello engine, and I was with the owner of the car, and we were going down the highway. There was no grill shell on this car. There was no hood. The car became known as the Torpedo but we were going down, and we had the the uh, dry sump system. It wasn't being vented properly, and mm. we looked like we we had smoke come out of this thing. Looked like we were spraying for medfly. Oh gosh! We pretty much smoked up the entire downtown of Oakland, and you know this this car is absolutely beautiful. I mean, we're putting it together with white gloves. We get back to the shop. This is our first test drive. And the back of it's covered in oil, and there's oil dripping out of every crack. And that's about the time you, you're wondering if you're really cut out for this <laughs> work or not. Yes. <laughs> and you've got to dig deep and say, okay, wipe her down. Uh, this is, there's, there's a fundamental problem here. We have to discover what it is, and we're going to move on. Sure. And, uh, and those are the times, if you can draw a smile, uh, it really helps the crew. <laughs> yes. I, I can't believe he's smiling. You know? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Well, Um, you know, it's kind of they say the last 10% is as difficult as the first 80 in some respect uh, of getting that last little bit right and completed because you've been tied up in it for so long. Absolutely, and 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 you've got to keep your client engaged, and you know they can't wait to go down the road in this thing or go to the show or whatever. And um, uh, years ago, we were building a car, and uh, in fact, we it was for Tim Allen, the movie actor Tim Allen, mm-hmm. and we had a potential client coming to visit us. And when he got there, we had the engine out of Tim's brand new car back out because it, we had a leak inside the back of the engine. Mm. And I thought that's the end. This guy's never going to do this job here he's going to see us with this and we look like i mean we hadn't shaved in three days and i don't know (laughs) that we'd been to bed or showered or anything else and things just weren't going as smooth as we would like and he said he wanted to talk to me for a minute and i go this is it i'm done and he says you know the next project comes out of here is mine i love what's going on here Uh, you guys are so wrapped up into it and saw the passion yeah, and boy, there was all my buddies were pulling for me and working, and it was really something that he has no idea what those words meant to me. You yes, know? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Wonderful story. Thank you for sharing that. Let's shift gears here and go to the other end of the spectrum, and I'd love you to share an aha moment you had in your business or your career. It's one of those times when you realize that an idea or a concept you have has got a ton of merit, it's going to make it. And tell us the steps you took to turn your aha moment into your success. You know, it's funny you say the aha moment because sometimes the aha moment for me has been along the journey of completing a car. And I always always tell people it's when I flip the lights off at night and I stand there that everybody's gone. I'm looking at the car and maybe the first time it's down on its wheels Mm -hmm. and maybe it's the first time that the body's complete or it's it's painted or whatever the the, the stage of the progress is. And you go, ah... It's starting to, it, 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 this thing has got, it's starting to develop its own life now. It's no longer a dream, uh, and no longer a drawing. It is, it ha- it's real, and you can go touch it. So sometimes I used to I laugh about that because I would tell people that's my aha time when I flip the lights off. And if you've got a good project going, it, you, you, you keep feeling that. Um, but there was a time in 1995 when I was uh, Builder of the Year of the Oakland Roadster Show. Very cool. And, 
and um, they asked us to have create a display, and we had a wonderful display set up. And about uh, the show is in I think February at that time, and and about July, I a light went on for me that I was building a 32 Ford, and I thought I need to build a special because we can. Mm-hmm. And if we build a 32 Ford, it'll be a nice 32 Ford, but it's still an old Ford. So at, in July, we decided to hand make a car, and it became known as the California V8 Special. And a little flathead powered car, and it was it's a little jewel. It was Somebody told me it looks like a ball bearing. It's just a little jewel <laughs> of a car. And that was a turning point, I think, because that little jewel captured a lot of attention, it captured the attention of uh, film star Tim Allen, and he ordered one like it, a little a different version of it. But, you know, that was a turning point, and I, it, that we wanted to have the opportunity to showcase what we can do, And uh, even though we were in a hot rod show. And, and, it, and I think it had an effect on how hot rods were going to go from that point. You know, we were yeah. riveting things together and making unconventionally designed panels and, you know, sprinkling a little European <laughs> dust on this hot rod, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And I love the aha is really the ah moment. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah. that. Maybe I need to change that question yeah, with uh, my, I, uh, my, my interviews here. Yeah, the ah moment. <laughs> I understand, yeah, when it all co- is coming together. Fantastic. I know you've had many proud moments in your business and your career, but is there one in particular you can share with us that really stands out? Well, yeah, it's, it, I guess the proudest thing in my business life and, and, and car building is the fact that I work with my sons and my wife. And, and, and that sounds kind of corny and, and plain vanilla, but that's just a fact. And, you know, there's a lot of these shows where people are throwing things and <laughs> not getting along and that kind of thing. That's not the case here. We get along very well. Uh, my oldest son, Michael, manages a shop and, and uh, takes care of the, that, the stuff and the clients. And my youngest son does all the solid modeling and engineering. And, and my wife, keeps tabs on all of us <laughs> of course uh, yeah and um particularly me and and so i guess that's really i'm proud to be not so much them working for me but me working with them because i'm mm. you know i'm, I'm I, maybe my heydays come and go i'm not sure but um <laughs> i do get to share uh, my experience with them i've shared my skills with them but now I'm starting to watch how they do things, and I'm seeing the business change. I'm seeing the materials that we use change, and the, the techniques that we use change, and the tools that we use. I mean, my son runs a CNC milling machine here, and, and I used to say I'd get a computer if it could make me parts. Well, <laughs> that day has come for us, you yeah. know, and, and I never thought I would say that when, when I first heard of computers. But I guess that, that we're, that's what we're really proud of, and I'm proud actually to be taking the journey with them now because they cease to amaze me daily, mm. and particularly with new machinery and new concepts. And, and, and the fact is they're far smarter than I am, <laughs> and uh, we just kind of you know beat panels smooth, and uh, they have a more technical approach to things, and, sure. and things come out they simply come out better. You well, know? you're very fortunate, and they say that we are a culmination of those people that we surround ourselves with, and for you to be able to surround yourself with your family members, and, and I can hear the pride in your voice you have for them as uh, not only family members, but team members of what you guys are building there. It's absolutely wonderful. Let's have a little bit of fun here. What was your first really special car? doesn't have to mean your first car, but a car that really meant something to you. And if you'd share a memory with us that you had with that vehicle. Well, gosh, there's, I, I've been so fortunate to have some of, certainly the, the very special car, the California V8 Special that we built from scratch, it was very special, and I built that. We were at a time when our shop was really busy, and I built that for the most part. When I say I, I hope I never say I mm-hmm. too much because it's we built that. At home, for the most part, in my garage. Wow. And, but while I was building that car, I also had the good fortune to own a Lamborghini Mira, which I owned for oh. many, many years. Oh, my for, goodness. <laughs> for some odd 30-some-odd years. But Wow. 
I never covered that car up, and I uh, loved looking at it, and I just thought it was a jewel of a design. Yes, and uh, just did it. It just did everything for me, and and uh, I loved having it. So, it, as much as that car was fabulous, the car that we built was a connection uh, was the connection to Tim Allen. He saw it on in a magazine or so forth and and obviously when you get a call from Tim Allen I I'll never forget my son said you're not going to believe this one I wasn't here that day mm-hmm. but Tim Allen called and I says the Tim Allen he says, yeah the Tim Allen I said <laughs> the you tool man be kidding me. <laughs> yeah the tool man called and his interest us in building him a car and I said you got to be kidding me wow you know so Very that cool. was yeah, and so that car probably is the one, you know, the yeah. V8 special little black thing and belongs to a dear friend of mine, uh, uh, Ted Stevens, and he still has it in his collection, and uh, it's just a little jewel. That's probably the baby. That's yeah. probably it, the baby. It sounds like it. I've had the pleasure of meeting Tim. I actually met him at the Playboy Mansion at a party there, of <laughs> all the things. Life of the party. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was really interesting, and uh, we ended up talking we meaning a gentleman i was with there and some other people kind of over in the corner talking cars for quite a while and yeah he's definitely a car guy for sure he's a car nut he is for sure yeah kind of kind of like jay leno is so the the tv is just a means to the cars so that's right (laughs) (laughs) got a guy's got to make a living somehow (laughs) i guess so i guess so how about seller's remorse is there a vehicle that you've let go that you really wish you could have back in your garage yeah, there's probably a car I wish I had back in my garage, and I guess the best part of it is it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be that difficult to get back in my garage because it because nobody else in the world want wanted one. <laughs> <laughs> it has no particular value, uh, but it was my first car. Oh, and uh, we everybody has their first car story, and and uh, and uh, of course that particular car I'm sure they crushed a long time ago because uh, uh, the only one that it appealed to I'm sure was me. But um, <laughs> I want a little Model A two door sedan, and my father would let me have it because it, it wouldn't run and he didn't think I'd get it running and and then there was a 37 Chevy and he wouldn't let me get that one because it, it didn't run and so what I ended up with and and it was a, a 53 Dodge of all things a two-door 53 Dodge and I loved it because it had a little V8 Hemi in it okay. and that was good enough for me and that little car, I fixed up that car before I was old enough to drive it, and I radiused the wheel wells, and I rolled the the underpans and made Nerf bars and lowered it and chromed the valve covers and did all this. And I and I told my girlfriend at the time, who who is now my wife, we've been married 50 years. So oh, congratulations. Uh, my, my high school sweetheart, I was telling her about this car that I was going to bring to school the day I turned 16 and uh, get my driver's license and I'll bring it to school. So she had her girlfriends out to see this car and I'm sure they she it sounded pretty good from what I've been telling her and <laughs> when I rolled around the corner I think they all laughed, you know. Yeah. It's like that's, that's it? the one. Yeah. <laughs> that's the <his> car. <laughs> And it was a proud moment for me, but but uh, and I'm sure they laughed at it, uh, the fact that what's what's he see in that ugly car, you know? But I really like that car, and and uh, and along my journey, I've met a few other guys that their first car was the same. One of them was George Poteet, who is a land speed record holder in his Bonneville racing and a car collector another guy named jimmy dobbs and these are all big dogs you know and i thought they had a 53 dodge they're not too bad i need to go back and get another 53 dodge yeah yeah so uh like i said i had a lamborghini mira but eh, i guess if i had one wanted back it'd be a 53 dodge wow so, wow yeah. very cool well it's the memories it's all about it the is. memories. It's, that's what it's about so much about cars i write a blog every week in fact the, my blog comes out on Tuesdays, and tomorrow's is about uh, falling in love with cars. So, yeah, and why we do that and what it means to us. So, I love it. How about I, current projects? Is there one you're working on today that really has you excited and fired up? Yeah, we probably have four or five going today that we're really excited. Uh, we have a really grand project uh, that's going to Europe. Actually, it's powered by a it's a front engine car powered by a Falconer Ryan Falconer V12. Wow, Fab, fabulous engine! You know, 600 horsepower engine, uh, six speed transmission as a fully independent suspension car. It will have aluminum body on it, and its size and its presence is like like a modern Bentley coupe would be. 
Okay. So it's a, a grand car. We got we are commissioned to do this, and we have to really pay attention because it's a it's a big project. So we're building the entire car. We designed it. Um, we have an in-house designer here, Alberto Hernandez. He is our uh, in-house designer. So we have the capabilities of taking somebody's dream and taking it so where they can drive it down the road. And mm-hmm. so we're working on, on that. It's a big build, and we're really excited about it. So wow. um, it's, it's I don't know, European-ish with our spin on it, uh-huh. very rakish. And the idea when we set out to build this, we wanted a car that when you looked at it, it would give you the impression it was very powerful. Okay. It would give you the impression that the wind would, the air would flow over it nicely, and its presence can't be not denied. So, you know, if they're parking in front of a grand hotel, some world class, and there's world class cars, this one will be, uh, its presence will be known just because of <laughs> oh, its wow. sheer beauty. You know, we're um, we're building a, a 34 Ford Coupe. Uh, a very high quality, very high level of creativity, and uh, its its uh, demands are it has to be uh, very good handling on the highway. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're building a little hot rod runabout. I call it a runabout for Wayne Carini, oh. our good friend at Chasing Classic yes, Car. Yes, a fellow guest here on Cars, yeah? Yeah, and we are building a little car here. He came into our design office, and, and Wayne and I have become friends, and and uh, met him on a rally years ago, and he was here visiting us, and we had a drawing on the on the studio wall here, and he said, "What's that?" I said, "Well, that's just a car that I've been thinking about." And drew it. He says, "Is it? Do you have a commission? Somebody commissioned to build it?" No. He says, "That's my car." Oh wow! He fell in love with that little car, and we're building it, and it's based uh-huh. on a 32 Ford chassis that we've modified with torsion bar suspension, has a little Ford flathead V8, mm-hmm. and a little tiny sport special body. And um, it's, it's so we're pretty darn excited about that. And, I'll bet. Uh, we, we have a couple of hot rod roadsters going right now, very special roadsters. Uh, we're building a roadster for uh, Mr. Grimsley, who is the fellow we built the fabulous Gato. For oh, Canberra. yes, the car that I got to lay my eyes on. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we're building him a very spectacular roadster. I'm doing it with my partner in this project, a fellow by the name of Jackie Howerton, and he's a very well-known uh, race car driver and Indy car builder, and we are building this car together. And it's a, spe- it's a piece of metal sculpture that's going to look like a hot rod. Wow. And, uh, but it is truly special. Uh, it's and uh, so yeah, we have some great, great builds going here. Yes, yeah, sounds fantastic. Pretty excited. Yeah, I'll bet. I can't wait to see all of them. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> and neither can you, I'm sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now here's a very introspective question for you, Steve. If you were a car, what kind of car would you be, and why? <laughs> Man, you got these tough questions. Yes, yes. This is the one for the couch, you know, kind of gets yeah. you in your head a little bit. Well, boy, there's there's a few things that are very clear to me, and one of them is very clear that I love hot rods, and I, the reason I love hot rods is because they're so pure. There's no rules to hot rodding. It doesn't matter what you package together. It's it's what hot rods are all about, and mm-hmm. and, um, and I love things that are. Uh, I love American-made things. I love the Scarab sports cars. Uh, they're classic beauty oh, and yeah. striping by Von Dutch and, <laughs> yes. you know, metal shaping from California's best and, and a good performance. So I love those and Lance Reventlow's story and on and on and on. And how could you not love Scarabs? And But I also love the Alpha 8C2900. Ooh. By Turing, there's nothing for its sheer beauty. There's absolutely nothing more beautiful mm-hmm. on four wheels, in my opinion, than that car. And um, so maybe my answer is a hot-rodded 8C Alpha that we build here in America. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's a very cool answer because the gentleman who was a guest on my show, Harold Cleworth, who's a, an artist, a painter, suggested this question for me early on when I started Cars Yeah. And he said, you know... 
I think I'd like to be, the back of me would be a Biarritz, 59 Biarritz Cadillac, and the front would be some kind of a British car because I'm, you know, an Aston or something. I'm from, and I'm going, what? It sounds like Frankenstein. But yeah. when you think about it, yeah, we are a unique individual. So I love your answer because it's this combination of all these facets of things that you're in love with. So very good answer. That's very unique yeah, it, and different. I like that. And it's kind of our next project. You know what I mean? That's how these projects develop. That's yeah. how the next project comes. You say, okay, I got the idea for the next one. You yes, know? <laughs> I know. That's what makes it so fantastic. Oh, that's yeah. great. So Steve, up next is the last lap. But before we put the pedal to the metal, here's a little something for the Cars Yeah listeners. Do you love vintage cars? Then go to CarsYeah.com and get a free copy of the fantastic Filler Up book. It's a full-color ebook filled with fuel filler fun with over 60 color photographs of vintage cars plus inspirational quotes from some of the most famous automotive enthusiasts of all time. Simply go to carsyad.com and click on the free book button on the homepage. Download your free Filler Up book today at Cars Yeah. All right, Steve, we're back and we're entering the last lap, and this is where I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners... Some very quick blips of the throttle answers. So are you ready? Sure. What is the best automotive advice you've ever received? Keep things simple. <laughs> yes. Save something for the next project because making things complicated can sometimes compromise the completion of the project. Yes. Very good advice. Did that come from one of your family members? That came from my dear friend, John Butera. Oh, wonderful. Great. He says, don't don't create the Mona Lisa, which he typically did, or I thought he did, but he said, save something for the next one. Wonderful. <laughs> That's Keep great. Keep things simple. Yes. Great yes. advice. The old yes. KISS, K-I-S-S. Keep it simple. I like to say silly instead of stupid, but uh, yes. keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Yes. Would you share one of your personal habits that you believe has contributed to your success? Oh, I think I, um, I think work ethics, just, just hard working. Mm-hmm and enjoying what you do. Not everybody is as fortunate as I have been to have a real passion for our work. Um, so I think our work ethics, hard work, and you know how that all develops into luck. And all that <laughs> yes, <stuff>. yes. No <laughs> luck there. Just a lot of tough elbow grease and hard work. So That's yeah, right. That's great. Right. Perseverance, tenacity, all of those things wrapped into one big piece of metal. <laughs> yes. That's right. Do you have a resource that you think our listeners would really enjoy? I know there's a lot of them out there these days, but maybe it's a website or a blog that you get. Yeah, I love the website here. My good friends in Oakland here. It's called Mega Deluxe Sport. It's a f- fabulous, fabulous. You've got to get on there. These guys get it. They're here from Oakland, but they have stuff about Steve McQueen and motorcycle racing. and Cool handbags and handmade cars and motorcycles and bicycles that is a truly fun thing to see mega deluxe sport and uh we're neighbors here in oakland and man i'm proud of those guys fantastic how about a book is there one book in particular you think the cars out listeners would really enjoy yeah of course i'm a hot rodder now and um um, there's a lot of grand books. I have a library at home, and uh, and they're just chuck full of books that I love all the t- look at all the time. But mm-hmm. my good P- good friend Peter Vincent, who uh, is mm-hmm. just a wonderful guy, and uh, he's got great books on hot rodding, and he has one on hot rod garages. He's such a fabulous photographer. I just love the books of Peter Vincent and and the ones on hot rodding, hot rod garages. One great, great has a lot of cool pictures and uh, fun stuff. Yes, Always absolutely. Fun. Peter's has been a guest here on Cars Yeah. Fantastic books. I have many of his books as well, and they're just fantastic. I'll remind our listeners that you can find links to all these resources at carsyeah.com slash Steve Mole. And Steve's last name is spelled M-O-A-L. All right, Steve, we're up to the checkered flag. And this last question can be a real doozy for some people. If you could only have one collector car in your garage, but don't worry about the cost, because today I'm going to get you whatever you'd like. But you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other cars with, so that little trick's off the table. What would that one vehicle be, and why? Well, I guess the one car that I'd like to have in my garage, and why, it, it, well, the, the easy answer is the next one we're going to build. But, uh, <laughs> Sound like Dr. Back, Porsche. <laughs> yeah, back to the 2.9 Alpha, the 8C short wheel base by mm-hmm. Touring, the Spider. I love its grand, uh, the scale of it is tight, 
and and small. It has the it's just fabulous. There's nothing prettier. It, it functions well. It's giant brake drums. It's 8C supercharged, 8-cylinder supercharged engine. I was in Europe uh, with my good friend Dennis Varney, and we had one following us through the mountains, and I can still hear the valve train and the, the hiss of the oh. supercharger of that car. Uh, the 8C Alphas got, is, would be the one. And uh, if it ever ended up in my garage, it would never leave. I'll trust you can trust that. <laughs> yes. Oh, gorgeous cars. Fantastic. And I can see being a designer and a builder why you would love that vehicle so much because they are so – combination of elegance and power all wrapped yeah. into a, a whole bunch of things. So I have something close to it. I have a Stanley Wanless bronze of that car here in my office called Freewheeling. Oh, yeah. And it's absolutely fabulous. Yes. And I uh, – uh, so to help answer my question, I just swing my chair around and look at that. <laughs> well, and Stanley has also been a guest here on Cars, yeah, oh. and he's just created some wonderful things. Uh, oh, another artist has been on the show here uh, early on when I started Cars, yeah. Amazing work that he does, and uh, yeah, nice. At least you have that sculpture there to look at every day. Oh, so. man, yeah, and, and he's special. Yes, he is a very unique individual, very creative. Steve, you've taken me on a great ride today, and I knew you would. I've so enjoyed our stories. And I want to thank you for sharing your journey with the Cars Yow listeners and with me. Could you give us one parting piece of guidance before you drive off into the sunset in that Alpha 8C? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I uh, had the good fortune to give the engineering students a, a uh, lecture at Stanford University. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that was so important, I barely got out of high school. For, so for me to give a lecture at Stanford University just didn't seem real. Very but cool. I, I did, and it, and it came off well, and, and uh, we had a car there. So I left them with something, and I've heard it repeated again. And so I'm, I'm really proud that I told them that. And the message was simple, and that was to complete each project with the same enthusiasm that you started with. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to do sometimes, and it doesn't matter if you're building a car or, or whatever it may be, remodeling your house, whatever, but it's very, very important. And so the message is complete your projects with the same enthusiasm that you started with. That's my parting thought. <laughs> Wonderful. Perfect. And what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you, your company, your team? Well, on the Internet, we're easy enough to find www.mol.com, M-O-A-L.com. We're easy enough to find there, and, uh, and there's, there's things we've been lucky to have things written about us. If you just Google up Mole or the Gato or these cars that we've built, yes. there's plenty there, and uh, we're, we're proud of all that. I'll bet, as you should be. And listeners, again, you can find links to everything on Steve's show notes page at carsyad.com. Just put Steve in the search box, and his show notes page will pop up, and you'll find everything there. Steve, thanks again for being so generous today with your time and your expertise and for sharing your experiences with me and the listeners. It's been great fun. Until we talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you so much. Great time for me. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!